Is this the ultimate luxury stealth bomber? We'll test it on the German Autobahn for you today with the BMW i7. Thomas is an Autogefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with this front. Drevet gray is the color, really dark gray. And then we have this huge double or even mono kidney with this connection there in the middle part with the sensor plate. Then this is an option for these crystalline headlamp head look. The upper part is the daytime running light. The lower part, these then are the normal high beam units. And when this is also running, then you also have it's again optional, iconic glow. This is then the frame that is illuminated around this double kidney. You can even better see that in the dark. It has split a lot of opinions, this new front look of the 7 Series. Remember that the 7 Series built on the same platform, combustion engines, plug-in hybrid, and also here the all-electric i7. Turning indicators in the front, they have this kind of pulsing effect, a little bit like a, like a heartbeat. And by the way, said that this design is splitting opinion. I asked Leah about that. And of course, it's the most important thing what the girls say. And she likes the design in the front. Does the BMW i7 have a frunk? Let's take a look. Ah, it does not. They hide a lot of tech underneath there. It's probably the largest, so to speak, engine cover I've ever seen. Well, but no frunk. The length here at 5 meters 39 or 212 inches. That's of course really massive because in this new generation, the 7 Series only comes in the long wheelbase version. Wheels 19 to 21 inch will also be later a little bigger when we soon give you the M version of that one. Here, these 21 inch wheels, look at that golden contrast here, BMW individual wheels. They look really impressive indeed. This is the M Sport Pack, so you also have a little bit more sporty accentuations on the outside. For example, also this blacked out part in the side, in the lower part right there. There will be rear wheel drive versions, E-Drive 50. And there's also all-wheel drive, one electric motor in the rear, one in the front, like here the X-Drive 60. And the top version is the M70, actually. Acceleration figures are 3.7, M70, 4.7 for this one, X Drive 60 and 5.5 for the pure rear wheel drive version, the E Drive 50. Yeah, even the rear wheel drive version will be quick enough. Rear perspective here, actually clean layout. The whole layout is also more traditional than, for example, the competitor Mercedes EQS. And here you can see really stretched and slim the rear lamps. As for technology, the air suspension is standard, also rear axle steering. This car comes with an optional and anti-tilt control. It's called Executive Drive Pro. We also test it here today on the German Autobahn. And we will test also the range and efficiency at different Autobahn speeds. Turning indicators in the rear are also slim and they also once again have this pulsing effect. Do you like that? The battery is at 102 kilowatt hours and we'll test the concise range once again at different speeds later in this review. Recharging, DC charging peak is actually at almost 200 kilowatt and that means 10 to 80% state of charge in 34 minutes here. And you can see it's a really nice cover here, both for the AC and the DC port. This is the ordinary key you can get, like the most simple one. I always like to have just a simple key fob. Then we have the automatic door function here. It's an option for 1,500 euros. How far it opens, it depends on what is blocking the sensor or not. So even when you're close to the camera, we have to go away a little bit more. There we go, and then it opens all the way. The seat control is at the inside of the door here. There's this crystalline option as well, and ambient lighting already begins right here. Bowers and Wilkins sound system, and high gloss black then here for the window levers. Yeah, I think less high gloss black piano like would be better. Then we have also on the interior, here is the M Sport Pack, means to have this steering wheel in the M style, so the sportier styling, but still real buttons on the steering wheel. And these are the Viganza seats, so this is then animal free here from the whole seating, and really plush, nice structure as well, this quilting, and the so-called Einsitzhöhe. Listen and repeat, German lesson for today. Einsitzhöhe, that's like a special automotive term for how plush the very, in the very first part of the seat is. 
and that is at the moment really leading with BMW and especially here with these high grade leather red seats and they are softer and more comfortable than the optional animal skin pack. So here, you can see that here when I, when I push it down here like this. So these here are at this moment to me the most comfortable seats overall together with the counterpart in the BMW X7 or in the X5 which have then the SUV seating form. You can get them actually almost everywhere only if you are in the US market and pick the i7. For the combustion, for the V8, yes, but not for the i7. Like, why is that? Sometimes I don't understand this, you know, market offering trim logic. No idea. Then headroom here. This is the one also with panoramic roof. Still, even here, a lot of headroom left, 189 or 6 for 2. And here, I did a special thing. When you come closer, at the moment, the shade is closed. But I press it forward here and then it opens. And it's also a reason that it goes forward because here you have the space for this mechanism to roll it in. If they would put it to the rear, then you would have less rear headroom here in the front. It really doesn't matter here in, in that front part. So it's a clever solution. Then the only thing is it's a fixed panoramic roof, so it will not open. Yeah, these are the fitting perforated leather red shoes to the seats. Here, when I press the brake, by the way, I can also induce the door closing. I can either press here at this button or just hit the brake here and then the driver door is closing. We know it from a Tesla Model X. Interior cockpit overview, 12.3 inch left, 14.9 inch on the right, one curved screen. Then a nice ambient lighting integration here. And when you switch the driving modes, for example, you can see that the ambient light is also changing here in the sport mode. The seats come also a little bit closer. And here, uh, the right part of that is the ambient lighting I set. So it has this animation right there. And then the rest of it changes once again to my personal ambient light setting. So you can also in the video light set here, for example, in this expressive mode, you also hear what's happening. Then, for example, everything is opening up also on the sides and so on. Or there's this relax mode. Um, that was the art, relax mode. Then you hear it, everything is closing again, all the shades and so on. Inductive charging pad in the front, also with the cooling function. Then the cup holders here are hidden very nicely. You can slide them back, like a little bit press and slide. And then we have adaptive cup holders underneath. It's good to still have this turning and pressing knob so I can control the infotainment system from here. However, this crystalline option is not the way to go because the light comes in here like from the side and then can blind the driver, I feel. And this is then here the volume knob. Also good to have that one. And we have some hotkeys here, but I don't understand that when you use this home button right here, you cannot access the real main menu. So what I mean by that is, oh, wait a minute, reduce blower for me well i would never say that okay maybe it goes too far <laughs> back to the menu so here i want to access this main menu here but when i press the home button i always get here to this home menu but when i'm driving sometimes i want to you know pick something here or like the uh, like consumption figure or something at live vehicle but when i press the home button it always takes me back here to this map view climate menu they put it here i like to have it manual but yeah that's what we have to live with obviously and then here the seat heating or the heated steering wheel a little bit weird i feel here is the button for the glove box i don't know i prefer like to have a real knob here but what do you think yeah and this ambient light stripe is also really reflecting depending on the sun and this ambient lighting bar the reflections you can see here also creates a lot of rainbows in the vehicle. And when the crystalline knob here catches the sun, some more light reflections from the turning and pressing knob. <laughs> Digital instruments are adjustable in a way that you can switch the content in the middle part, but you can also switch the whole layout like this. You also get a head-up display, this at the moment, the assistant systems view. Towards the rear seats, we also have this automatic door option when we went for that. And then you can see if I just stand next to it, it doesn't open, really works with a sensor, so it also doesn't hit a pole or something when you're using that unintentionally or so. So, so it completely opens when it, everything is left free, like here. There we go. And then we have this luxurious interior, inside of the doors, already with soft touch and all animal free, everything you see. And here this really plush. Thing is, you have these 
displays here inside the doors and there for example you also control the blinds and you see it takes some time until they load and then you press it here and I feel that putting up a blind would just need like another press of the window control to put this one up so I feel that would be a more easy solution than this one so I think putting everything in the display there is a technological overkill Take a look inside, also the Viganza seats for the rear with this really nice quilting or stitching then here. Since the climate control is in the doors, it's also not placed in the middle part then. And also it has still a middle tunnel because it's not only EV, this platform. Here in this electric version, they store battery cells then in this middle tunnel part as well. Now first, sitting behind the seat as I would be driving, a lot of legroom because of that long wheelbase, of course, and already very cozy. Now I take off my shoes. <laughs> I know you appreciate that. To switch between the seats and, well, you can theoretically all sit in the middle part, but here, especially this part is so hard then from, you know, the stuff that is underneath it. The very top part is once again very soft, but it's not recommended really to sit in the middle part more here move the passenger seat all the way forward here for the most space available and then you can also enjoy all that chauffeur stuff of course so yeah that's of course a very cool thing and we'll also test this position here while driving very soon later in the driving part as for the trunk you have 500 liters here in the i7 40 liters more in the combustion engine actually so you lose a little bit of height in the back part here the length overall is about one meters ten or 43 inches just the width here is limited to about 80 centimeters or 31 inches in this you know in this lower part of course a little bit wider in the wheel arches as for the charging cable you have some more space here underneath there we go actually reasonable space underneath and then you can also use the ski hatch this is it Approaching the German Autobahn, the ultimate test for this driving machine, this silent stealth bomber. We go to the sport mode. Here we go. Driving 50 kilometers an hour and we do an acceleration. Well, it's so silent you can hear nothing from the car passing by and so on. And let's accelerate it out. Let's go. Plop, that's 130 kilometers an hour. Whoa, that is really silent. I mean, you hear nothing, and I think it's good also when you don't have this sound feedback. You can have these iconic sounds that were composed by Hans Zimmer. But I feel that this silent acceleration is just more awesome in a way. You know, how do you like it? She, she <laughs> likes it, she likes it. It gets, gets the Leah stamp. It's good, very, very good, yeah. Wow, and the level of sophistication you feel when driving this vehicle is really unparalleled. So the seating comfort together with the super silent atmosphere, then the power and the air suspension that is not too soft, not too stiff. Ooh, you know, I'm driving a lot of vehicles, even, you know, sometimes a couple of vehicles per week and something between one and two thousand over the last ten years or so but this is here wow this is really something else this is one of the very rare vehicles where you drive it just for a couple of minutes and you think like damn i really need one you know and i hardly ever say that in 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 that way you know so um i could just drive on for hours and hours and hours i feel at this moment and here we're driving 150 kilometers an hour and it literally feels like absolutely nothing. Lane change here at high speeds. It's also equipped with the anti-tilt control, Executive Drive Pro. That also keeps the car even more upright. It's not shaking at all. You don't even feel that you're moving all this weight. Wow, this is really extraordinary. Steering. Um, doesn't let's say it doesn't feel like the most natural one like also if you compare some other competitors but overall good definitely very good also inside BMW model portfolio is also you know ranked pretty high I feel so it, you don't need much force to move it 
same in here also no dead zone area and so on so overall i'm satisfied maybe if it could transport me a little bit more natural feeling in the sports mode i feel it's okay but in the normal modes it could maybe give me more feeling but yeah maybe that's also just a personal preference and talking about the interface while driving here when you put in the turning indicators you can of course do that with this tipping function but you can also smash them in and i really like to do that because it just you know in this all electric world and this so much is digital it still gives you this analog feedback from the vehicle and i like to you know push a real button and turn a real lever and still think this is something i control and not something that controls me that's that's what i feel you know about about the the interface and, and this is still the case here with the turning indicator it's not the case with climate knobs i still would like to have some yeah that's the only thing we cannot have then here at this moment but once again i can say that the key aspect is here really that there's hardly any other vehicle on the road that has this level of sophistication both in comfort and the togetherness or compromise of sportiness and comfort you know so that is really something and um, to me i feel that driving wise this at the moment or among or def or maybe even the leading sedan if you think about electric versus petrol engine i've also done a review where i directly drove them after each other and compared them of course this silence is something special definitely something unique mm, then like a nice six or eight cylinder sound can also be calming in a way it's also indeed a matter of preference so i felt that maybe with the petrol engine i had a little bit more fun but both petrol and combustion engine uh, sorry <laughs> petrol is the combustion engine, of course i mean like the combustion engine and the electric drive they both come very close here with the bmw in the driving feeling and this is here a very interesting part because this is the transition here on the german autobahn from one to another s combination here inside the corner beautiful job accelerating out rear electric motors a little bit stronger than the front one wow and there's hardly any other vehicle where sporty driving feeling is so comfortable at the same time even when you accelerate you feel that you know i told you earlier in the interior part that the so-called einsatzhöhe like the very soft plush bolstering on the very top it also prevents that the bones you know that are most outside from looking from inside the body that they start to hurt and at some point well wow, nice i mean lighting once again in the tunnel so you feel that you're kind of moving on the seat while accelerating but you know like like you would be on a cushion uh, that that's yeah that's something very special once again and here we can do one more acceleration before we come to the consumption part so here, left side so at the moment we are at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour that's a quick audi a8 passing here by now and let's go one more time 150 wow so quick this is just awesome rear wheel drive would also be possible a little bit slower than to me it would still fit the vehicle you don't need an all-wheel drive version if you want to keep the price a little bit lower because yes that's the one thing about this vehicle the price is astronomical and we'll talk about this in the final um, conclusion at the end of the video once again about the pricing so the drive amazing but what about the efficiency what we're going to do now is we go to this yeah, um, little bit confusing menu and yeah that's definitely something to criticize as i told you earlier I've driven this vehicle a couple of times and still I'm confused about some of the features and how to get there and that's not a good sign definitely. So a long term average here at about yeah, 700 kilometers driven is at 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer and that is some 3 miles per kilowatt hour. This would mean somewhat, yeah, also good summer temperatures and so on, 500 kilometers or 300 miles of range. This is a realistic figure for summertime but now when we really put it to the test let's see so we reset these values in now and we have quite 
even straight autobahn. And let's now put the cruise control to 100 kilometers an hour and see what we can score. So this would be, you know, most other countries than Germany where it's a little bit slower on the motorway and so on. And then we can see if we can score an even better consumption figure, if we can even be more efficient in that one. And after that, we go to 130 kilometers an hour. And then I'll once again speed it up a little bit more and see what is the consumption when we really push it over a longer period of time. All right, I spent the last hour to do some <laughs> consumption data driving test. It's very interesting indeed. So at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, we could score some 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometers. That's 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So that means at one kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour on the motorway steady speed, we could even go 600 kilometers or 370 miles. There's just a little difference then when we went 130, that was like two, three kilowatt hours per one kilometer difference or like a 0.3 miles per kilowatt hour difference. So that would then more go you know, towards our average consumption figure. So that is then something between 500 and 600 kilometers and something between 300 and 370 miles when you drive a little bit faster. And then of course, really interesting when we are flooring it all the way out, really driving performance. I did like 170, 180 kilometers an hour. So like 100 miles per hour, something like that. And that ended up in 37 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. And that is some 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So that means at this really high speed, 180 kilometers an hour or something, 100, 110 miles per hour, you could then go around 260 kilometers or 160 miles. Overall, I found these efficiency facts very good. So, I mean, it doesn't look like the most efficient car from the exterior. And there are more wind efficient ones. The Mercedes EQS, for example, is more aerodynamic. Yes, definitely. But they're also very good here in the efficiency of the electric motors. That is a crucial thing, definitely. However, here at high speeds, aerodynamics, of course, play a good, like a, like a major role. So remember that at motorway speeds, aerodynamic becomes like two thirds of the factor that decides the overall consumption or efficiency. That's very interesting. But still, it scores quite good numbers. You then have to think about if you are fine with these projected ranges. And I mean, considering it's still a very expensive vehicle and then you only get a relatively low range in comparison to plug in hybrid combustion engine and so on. That's still a factor when buying these fuel EVs here now. But I think for this kind of a vehicle, for this size and also the comfort you get overall, both front and the rear, these are actually very good efficiency results. What do you think? Now I switch the position. Leah is driving for us now. <laughs> Thank you. And you know that I usually prefer the driving position behind the steering wheel, but this is also quite nice. So the seats are also very comfortable here in the rear. You can also activate a shade, for example, here for the window when it's you know, a little bit too light. But that's also a thing about this vehicle again. This, for example, is a little bit better in the S-Class. There, I just press the window lever button a second time and then the shade comes up. Here now, I have to go in that menu and then see, ah, okay, blinds, then it loads, then I click it here on the symbol. I mean, when you are being chauffeured, you have time for that, you know, and also here the, the blind behind me, I can activate. This is a cool shot, right? That looks cool. That's really nice. So um, it is all possible, definitely. Yeah, no problem. Also the line on the other side, for example, I can do that. Or the top line I can also control, but I would rip the cameras off then by that. I think the controls, we experienced that also in the front driving, even more crucial there. So when I wanted to change like, like the, you see, 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 see it on the, on the display, I want to change like the brightness of the head-up display, but you're searching too long for the functions. And the same case is also here for the rear. So I think the user interface is just too complicated. Once again, in the rear, it's less of a problem. 
in the front it is even more but the comfort is really unparalleled the seating quality the seating comfort is awesome here without a special chauffeur pack it's totally fine to me i just slide the seat forward there and then i have a lot of leg room or i mean maybe i take off my shoes and some here this middle part is quite a lot in the front actually so the best thing then is of course to put this one here down it's really voluminous and then it's really cozy here to put your elbow here also soft cushion just this part here um, is not that well done it's just too much too long um, i feel it's the cover then for the ski hatch so if you want to have the ski hatch and then i can also open this one here i can press this button here for the cup holders um, yeah have some drinks for there so i'm i'm actually totally happy here uh, driving wise also as for the air suspension here 21 inch wheels still super comfortable from the air suspension also in the rear so sometimes you have vehicles where it's maybe more comfortable in the front here, of course not at all, both comfort or same comfort level throughout the vehicle. And here at the moment on the motorway, some more traffic here now, so it's a good time to relax or maybe do some work here in the rear. When you're driving a little bit slower, then you feel more of that rear axis steering. That one can be felt even more in the rear. It does feel a little bit artificial, but then again, it also somewhat even out the g-force as i feel actually and that's also a good thing and here also a lane change or something is also just super relaxing here so ah yeah these these cushions here are also nice sometimes when they're too voluminous it's also not good but here also soft and plush very good quality once again well yeah once again i can just say it's very well done if you would have this additional chauffeur package, by the way, you could also stretch your legs. You have this car press and so on. But the only disadvantage is that when you would go for that one, they do not offer that with the best seating material here, the Veganza. That's the only downside then of this extra package. So to me, the clear verdict is incredible comfort, awesome driving. I'm also totally fine with the design, actually. However, user interface still too complicated some things need to be accessed just in an easier way efficiency actually also quite good even here on the german autobahn and we have more 7 series content or also from the competitor the eqs